Hello, how are you, my friend? I am Giancarlo Villatoro, the founding pastor of Victory Church in Odessa, Texas. How are you doing today? I hope your day is going great, and this is the good time that we can do to invest time reflecting in God's Word. I am going through the Bible timeline, Bible study. This Bible study started it over a year ago with uh, Genesis chapter 1. Today we are in Genesis chapter 39. This is the lesson number 77. And uh, the title of this lesson is Integrity Can Be Expensive. And I'm going to read the scripture based on the easy to read version, Genesis 39 from the verses 7 through 20. And I hope you will enjoy the reading and also the reflection that we will do about this passage of the scripture that we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Joseph was very handsome, good-looking man. After some time, the wife of Joseph's master began to pay attention, special attention to him. One day, she said to him, Sleep with me. But Joseph refused. He said, My master trusts me with everything in his house. He has given me responsibility for everything here. My master has made me almost equal to him in his house. I cannot sleep with his wife. That is wrong. It is a sin against God. The woman talked with Joseph every day, but he refused to sleep with her. One day, Joseph went into the house to do his work. He was the only man in the house at that time. His master's wife grabbed his coat and said to him, Come to bed with me. But Joseph ran out, out of the house so fast that he left his coat in her hand. The woman saw that Joseph had left his coat in her hand and had run out of the house. She called to the man outside and said, Look, this Hebrew slave was brought here to make fun of us. Look, this is wrong. He came in and tried to attack me, but I screamed. My scream scared him, and he ran away. But he left his coat with me. Then she kept his coat until her husband, Joseph's master, came home. She told her husband the same story she said. This Hebrew slave you brought here tried to attack me. But when he came near me, I screamed. He ran away, but he left his coat. Joseph's master listened to what his wife said, and he became very angry. So Potiphar put Joseph into the prison where the king's enemies were held. And that is where Joseph remained. What a story, my friend. What a story. As we know, Joseph is the 11th child of Jacob. We have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob had 12 children. Out of those 12 children, the number 11, Joseph, was hated by his brothers. The, the, the father gave him a special uh, coat one day with many colors. Those, uh, those brothers hated him, perhaps because of the coat or perhaps because of the dreams that he shared with his family. Joseph was special, perhaps like you are. You are special. And for, like Joseph, maybe you have a calling, a special calling in your life to do something very special in the life of many individuals. To become something really unique and uh, sometimes people don't like you because of that. <laughs> there is some animosity and hostility against you and, and nobody can tell really what is the reason. They just don't like you and they can be even mean to you. Imagine in this particular case, 
Joseph's brothers sold them to the Midianites, and they sold them to Potiphar. And once he is in Potiphar's house, and he is so prosperous in everything he's doing, which in Lesson 76 we discussed the characteristics of this Joseph worker, now he faced a new problem. You know, imagine this. You are a kid in your house, and people don't like you, and they mistreat you. Now, like Joseph, he was sold two, two, two times. He was confused, separated from his father, and probably feeling abandoned and lost in the world, just facing one difficulty after other. And now, here, Joseph faced another big problem. Now is uh, the harassment, the sexual harassment of this woman. Woman who obviously has no moral values. She was interested in having an affair with this man, which obviously she felt attracted to him because the scripture declares that he, he was very handsome, a, a good-looking man. So what, what a guy that is good-looking and handsome can do wh when women are attracted to him? Well, one thing that we know that happened here is that he refused to do it. You know what is interesting? It could be that you are, you are a girl, a pretty girl, or you are a guy, a good-looking guy. Like Joseph said, there are some things that are wrong. In the verse number 11, he says, this is wrong. It is a sin against God. And when we know that something is wrong, we need to just not do that. But unfortunately, most of us make that mistake. We have done things in life that they were not right. Perhaps that's your case. We felt it. We knew that, that thing was not the right thing to do, and yet we did it. And as a result of that, the consequences. So, at this point in our lives, we reflect about it and we say, I wish that I would never do that because of the experience, because of the lessons that we learn through life by making mistakes. It's important that we understand that, that once we learn the lesson, we are not going to do the same thing again and again and again, because what's the point? <laughs> but I understand this, that once we learn the lesson and we are not going to, to make the same mistake again, also, it's our responsibility to be understanding with others around us that are making mistakes. Because we are ahead of some people in life. Because of age or because of experiences or for whatever reason, we are ahead of other people. Some people that are younger than us or less experienced than us, they, they will also make mistakes. They will sin against God. You know what is important? It's important that we show compassion to those people. Because when we sin against God and we pay the consequences of our sin, we were restored. We felt the compassion of God in helping us to get out of that situation. Well, the same thing is what we need to do to others. Sometimes we are uh, immersed in different situations and we see people doing all kind of bad things and, and we feel offended sometimes. We feel uh, that is they're disrespectful what some people are doing. But if we are conscientious and, and we are honest with, with each other, we, we did similar things. Maybe not exactly the same thing, but sin is a sin. We should show compassion to individuals that sin because we all have failed. And that is very important to consider in this story. The second thing that I want to mention to you is that obviously there was a very dangerous situation. Joseph went to, to this house knowing that this woman was harassing him and he was by himself with this woman. 
in today's world, due to the variety of work possibilities, it's possible that we can find ourselves with uh, someone from the other gender, a guy that has to work with a girl and vice versa, and sometimes they need to be in a particular place, in an office place, or in a shop, or sometimes even in, a, in the same vehicle going to, to a meeting, or, or they meet for lunch business with customers or supervisors, etc. It's important that we take certain precautions about that. Because if we know that there are individuals that are flirting with us, why will ourselves put in that, uh, we, we will uh, expose ourselves to, to something like that. My friend, if you have somebody that you know is flirting with you, and it's not right, you are married, or this person is married, you don't need to expose yourself to, to that kind of context. Because, trust me, all kind of affairs are going to end bad for everybody. There is no one record in the history of humankind of people that have affairs that never get in, into trouble. That's not true. You know, starting with presidents through preachers, entrepreneurs, family members. We all know that. So what is the point of taking that risk? It's not wise. So if you are feeling like a tented because there is someone that is showing interest in you, sexually speaking, you have to be careful about that. You need to make sure that you don't put yourself in a dangerous situation like it happened to, to Joseph. This woman took the coat of Joseph and, uh, and start to lie. And I want you to, to see how evil works. First of all, the lies. She lied saying that he was uh, harassing her, attacking her. We, we know it's not true. So the lies. And then the manipulation, getting the coat, trying to make a point, trying to show that uh, she was right. You see? You have the lies, you have the manipulation. Obviously, there are no moral values. They are going to cheat. Cheating on people is normal for those who are practicing evil. And eventually, the false accusation. Evil people are going to do that. And one thing that I always mention about it is be careful with lies. You know, you, you don't need to lie at all. It's important that you force yourself to be truthful. When you are saying, I'm going to be in such place, and you don't go at the time that you agreed, when they ask you why you didn't come on time, tell the truth. Tell them, you know, I'm sorry, I, I got distracted at the store, or, or this job took me longer than I expected. But tell the truth. Always be truthful. Where are you when there is a phone call or a text message? Where are you? Tell the truth. When you force yourself to tell, to tell the truth, you, you are going in the right direction, my friend. You are going in the right direction. But when you allow yourself to lie, a little lie here, a little lie there, you are just opening a door to evil. Don't do that. On the other hand, if you are dealing with people, whether it's in the workplace or your family, your friends, whenever you see someone that is lying, not telling the truth, you better watch that person. Because that person that lies is going to be cheating eventually cheating on somebody or betraying somebody and then the manipulation and eventually the false accusation because that's the way that evil works. So very important to be truthful. And also when you have your relationships, your friends, your acquaintances, your co-workers, watch those who are lying. Watch carefully why they are lying. Because those people that are lying, they, they, they hide things. They are going to do something bad to others and eventually to you. So be careful about that. But finally, 
Potiphar, which is the husband of this woman, came to the house. The woman told the story. He believed it. There is no record that Potiphar interviewed Joseph and asked him, what happened? I want to know the truth. More likely, it seems like he just believed the wife and threw Joseph into jail, which was not fair. Where is God in all this? Where was God when Joseph was sold by his brothers? Where was God? when this woman was harassing Joseph. Where was God now that Joseph was thrown in jail? And that is the question that many people have today. Where is God now that my child is in the hospital? Where was God when my husband had this accident? Where was God when my wife had this situation? Where is God? People are asking today when they see their tribulations. And it's understandable. A lot of people suffer today. It is part of life. There is no perfect life. You might think that there are people with perfect life, but that's not true. There is no one person with a perfect life. Whether it's a wealthy man, or a healthy lady, when you find out the story in each life, you will find out that those people also have struggles. Because no one has a perfect life. The perfect life life doesn't exist on earth. The perfect life is going to be in heaven, but not here. We all go through difficulties. Some are financial difficulties. What about health difficulties? What about those individuals that are struggling with serious health problems and they can't find the solution? Sometimes they have the money to buy uh, the medicines or pay for treatments, but there is no solution. And quite often, it's the opposite. There are some solutions, but we can't afford those solutions. We don't have the money to pay for surgeries or treatments or doctors or prescriptions because they are way way too expensive what do we do in those cases where is God when when we lose the job where is God when there is an injustice in the company and people are being fired because there is a false accusation or because there are some hidden interests of some people and you will never know until way way in the future where is God when we suffer? Where is God when there is injustice in our lives? He is there with us. He is there with you right now, my friend. Perhaps you are struggling with problems and you feel that it's not fair. You feel like Joseph. God, this is not fair. What I have done, he said, why my brothers sold me? Why, if I am serving this man, And now his wife was harassing me. He believed her. And he is throwing me in jail. Why, God? There is always a reason. The Lord has a plan. In the following lessons, we will find out more about the plans that God had for Joseph. And those plans were wonderful. To save more people. Maybe you today are thinking... Well, I don't like my, my current situation. I, I really hate it. I just don't think that it's fair. And I, I just want to see God moving in my life, doing something today. I don't want to wait to the future. Maybe you are even fighting against the Lord. Perhaps you feel that He abandoned you. And maybe you think that God doesn't love you, that He has favorites, and you are not one of those. But you are wrong. I want you to know that when you are connected with the good Lord, God Almighty, through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sacrificial death of His Son, His powerful resurrection, conquering the grave, defeating evil, destroying the forces of Satan, 
in taking life. there for you, with you, in your heart, and through His Holy Spirit, we can feel revived and receive the restoration that we need. And then is when we can go through all kind of trials, my friend. If you ask me, Gian, have you suffered in your life? Have you had serious difficulties in your life? And the answer is yes. Yes. I have made many, many mistakes. I have sinned in my life many times, and I hurt people. I hurt the Lord. I betrayed the Lord. I betrayed myself. But also, I have because of the injustice of people, people around me, people that I have served with, people that I have loved, people that I have uh, been in church, involved with the church, pastors betraying me. In, in the business world, betrayal is unfortunately classic. People taking advantage of others. Of course, my friend, I have suffered. And when it's about health, what can I tell you? Myself, my family, and seeing people dying, going to heaven quicker than I expected, and then feeling the loneliness because they are gone. Many things that I have lived that I have suffered. But you know what I have found? Is that in my Lord, I have hope. And time after time, through all those years of trials and tribulations, His wonderful mercy, His compassion, have been with me all the way until today. And I trust in the Lord every day that He will take me to where He wants me to be. And that is the faith that I want you to receive today. Do not give up to the Lord. Do not give up and say, you know, I'm done with this Christian life, with these beliefs about the Bible. Do not give up, my friend. Do not give up. Because there is always hope. Yes, there are problems. Huge problems in the community, in the country, in the world, in your company, with your work, with your health, with your money, with your finances, with your family. Yes, there are many problems. But there is one God in heaven. Is the true God. He is not fake like all those uh, idols and, and false gods that you see. Today on TV, people that are talking about solutions. <laughs> you know, it is funny. It's really funny. To me, it is funny. When I see what people are saying on television, first of all, all the accusations against churches and Christian artists and all those things just attacking and attacking. What is the point of that? What if some people are doing the wrong thing even in the church. What, what if all that is true? In what way that affects you directly? Directly. Simply you don't give money to those people and that's it. But directly in what way affects you? You cannot control that. It's like if you try to control these football players or basketball players or baseball, baseball players or movie actors that they go in a horrible route. In what way that affects you? Do the same thing is with them. You see, it's ridiculous to try to put your eyes on some things like that. Forget about it. And what about the, the hope some people are trying to sell on TV, that this politician is going to bring this and that to the country and to the world? It's not going to happen. They cannot resolve our problems. The only one that can resolve our problems is the Lord God Almighty. He is the one who will restore you. He is the one that will help you. He is the one that will do amazing things for your life like he did for Joseph and for Paul and for David and for Peter and Mary and many other heroes in the Bible. He is the one that will take you out of the problem because he loves you. 
And even if he will never take us out of the situation where we are and we die, we know that in eternity, in heaven, then things are going to be different because that is what really matters. Not the 80, 90, 70, 100, whatever years we have of life in this, on this earth. This is great, but the greatness in heaven, it's, it has no comparison. There is no way we can compare heaven and the glory of heaven to this life. So even if the Lord, he says, son, daughter, I'm not going to fix this problem in your life. Even if he says that, we need to say, Lord, you are God. You know what's best for me. And I trust you. And I love you. <laughs>